And it looks like we are finally live, uh, running a couple minutes late. I had a couple of technical difficulties I was working out with uh, my guests, so no worries there, but we got it up and running. Super excited about this. I welcome everyone to uh, episode number 12 of Keep Calm and Carry. Tonight, I have my very, very special guest from Curtis of the VSO gun channel this is a a big interview for me because i if you can't tell i'm blushing a little bit <laughs> i've been a big fan of his for quite some time so but before we get into that i just want to say again thank you for you swinging by and joining me tonight uh and of course naturally i have to do a quick shameless plug for myself before we get over and start talking to Curtis here in just a second. So if you don't already know, of course, naturally, I have my website up and running. That is fitandfire.com. Swing over by there and check it out. If you don't know how the internet works, you just type in fitandfire.com and it'll take you right on over there. Got a number of different things on the website, uh, including deals of the week, uh, some really good finds on, you know, firearm accessories or something I think that I would like to get my hands on, but financially I've got my priorities set a little bit differently right now, but I'm going to share those with you guys so you can take advantage of that. It's super simple. Just click on the image and it will take you directly to the link. Now, full disclosure, some of these links do go to affiliates and that is one way that you can uh, support the channel. There is another way that you can support the channel that is down in the link below. Uh, it is the website that I really don't like to talk about, but it is Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, you're more than welcome to. I sure would appreciate it. Patreon members will... Um, have opportunities to get free gear from me. I'll do uh, additional giveaways on my Patreon page. And then of course I will release my YouTube videos early for you guys to check those out. So <clears throat> I really would appreciate all the support naturally. And I do appreciate everybody swinging by in the chat room. If you have any questions, don't be bashful. Send your questions in while we're chatting and we will go ahead and answer those as we go. So real quick, I'll hit the chat room up just to say hi to everybody. So far, we've got Poe Performance and Andrew swinging in and making themselves known. I sure do appreciate naturally both of you guys swinging by. It's glad I'm glad to see that Poe Performance, you're not at the baseball field this evening, so you can share in with this. Now, everybody should know Curtis from the VSO Gun Channel. He has been around for a number of years doing YouTube videos, and I am super excited to have him again on my channel. This is going to be an epic, um, hopefully not an epic fail in the chat room, <laughs> but an epic interview for me nonetheless, and uh, I'm super excited to have him with me. He's got, oh man, I, I can't imagine, you've got about a thousand or so couple thousand videos on his channel and it's um just great great content so by all means swing by check him out i've got a link to where you can find him down in the description below as well and without further ado i will introduce mr curtis from the vso channel <laughs> vso gun channel how are you doing sir i'm good man thanks for having me here today i am uh, excited uh whenever i get to go on to a, uh, a live show it's it's always good because a lot of you know what we do as far as on the internet is take after take after take after take i'm kind of a, a perfectionist in that regard uh you wouldn't know that by looking at my instagram feed because there's all kinds of misspellings and all that sort of stuff there i get beat up over the head over the time uh over that all the time but um but when i'm filming and when i'm editing um everything is always so you know got to be a certain way and when i get to do live shows, it's, it's more candid, you know, I get to just kind of be, and I don't have to, I don't have to, uh, you know, once it's out there, it's, it's gone. So it, <laughs> once you've said it, it's already out there and you can't really take it back. So I, I kind of like that aspect of it because, um, it, it's another opportunity to connect that, uh, that you don't get through video, uh, yeah. recorded video anyway. So outstanding. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that I like, to be a part in these live chats because uh, I, I like to focus on the, I hate to say it this way, but the human element of, you know, some of us personalities that are out there on the, on the interwebs with YouTube and, and Instagram and everything else, you know, with individuals that uh, you see 
in YouTube, you see videos all the time, but you never get to know the person themselves, what their background is, why they're doing this to begin with, and so on and so forth. So that's that's kind of my first question is, who is Curtis with the VSO Gun Channel, and why did you start a channel in the first place? Well, um, so as you hinted in the intro, I've been doing you know, gun video on YouTube for like a decade now. So I've been been around for a while. And uh, really what got me into YouTube it was a hobby. Uh, what got me into making video was strictly a hobby. I, uh, I just didn't like what was being put out there at the time. You, know, you got to remember, this is before any of your heavy hitters that you knew, that you know now. Uh, we were just kind of like, hey, you know, this is a cool new thing that's available uh, to communicate. Uh, we know a few things. We'd like to learn a lot of things. And that's kind of back in those early days, that's what it was, was kind of a, a networking opportunity and just a kind of like a, a sharing thing. Uh, and back then collaboration was really big. I would really like to see collaboration come back. And I think this is one of the big things with these live chats is being able to uh, get on with people with similar interests and discuss these things. Um, but as far as that is concerned, we kind of started out just kind of screwing around on the internet and then uh, for, for lack of a better way to put it, we kind of came back a few years after doing it and we're like, wow, people are actually watching this crap on purpose. Uh, maybe we got to try a little bit harder, <laughs> you know, uh, put some more effort in it. So we rebranded and, uh, and um, you know, try to be a little bit more professional about it uh, all the while learning. Uh, I'm 100% self-taught on the uh, on the video editing side and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I didn't go to school for any of that sort of stuff, but then um, some time later, after we kind of decided to take a little bit more uh, professional approach, uh, I kind of looked into uh, what was being presented and I was like, you know what, there's nobody out there that's really like actually testing guns. Like there's a there's some people out there, there's a, a video by somebody who won't be named uh, where about the different types of YouTube gun personalities and uh, they cover like the presenter and the and the host and the tester and the reviewer. And like, we didn't want to be any of that. So what I do is uh, we are, my business is dual faceted. Uh, part of it is the video side of stuff. And then the other side of it is the research and development, testing evaluation, consulting side of the house. And that's really born out of my background, which was in science. So I have uh, two degrees from, uh, uh, Ohio University, uh, biological sciences and chemistry. And right out of school, I started as a chemist and um, followed that path to a point where I just didn't want to do it anymore. And uh, and really kind of what killed it for me was Obama happened <laughs> uh, and kind of killed the um, the research uh, side of uh, the military industrial complex. And basically my work went away and I was basically like, hmm, you know what? Maybe this deriving my sole livelihood from a single source of income is a bad idea uh, or at least not the greatest idea in the world. So that's kind of where I, I kind of built my business model was to kind of um, insulate myself from that sort of stuff. And that is how uh, for probably the last six years, the, uh, the VSO Gun Channel has been running uh, under VSO Media. And then hopefully very soon, VSO or VS ordinance. So right on. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep the rest of that under uh, for now until we have the ability to do an official launch on that sort of thing. But it, some very, very cool stuff is coming. Outstanding. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to see. So um, did you start? Did you start getting into shooting prior to your channel or is it something Perfect. that just kind of morphed? since birth all right yeah. okay so i was kind of born into it so um sorry i cut you off continue no your question. no i was just going to ask you know what was your first memory of you know going out and shooting and, and do you remember what uh, what you shot if i quickly scan my memory i would say hunting with my old man um i think it was like five ish we were squirrel hunting uh, and that is the first time I actually recollect anything. I dropped this beautiful Ithaca shotgun, uh, and I actually cracked the stock on the floor, on the concrete floor. And I, I, we still have that shotgun and it had the corn cob, like 
pump yeah. and everything. Yeah. It yeah. was so well lapped. I mean, and I found out after the fact uh, that it was actually my great grandfather's uh, mm. shotgun. Like, and I'm just like, oh, you piece of shit. Um, but it was so well lapped that if you push the release button, the pump would fall all the way to the bottom and it would eject the shell. It was a 20 gauge. Uh, and we didn't do very good that day. <laughs> I'll just say that. I wasn't used to that at the time. But I grew up hunting, fishing, the outdoor sort of thing. Uh, we we lived on a small plot when I was um, when I was like before, like four, like one to four ish. Uh, but then my parents purchased a large farm uh, in the country across the state uh, to be closer to my dad's work. And that's kind of where it all started. And I just grew up on uh, 150 acres, you know, used to, you know, I was just used to going, coming home from school and going to get in the 22 and either just shooting or going fishing or hunting or something like that. I love shooting groundhogs and stuff like that. That's what I did. Um, that's what I did for fun when I was growing up. So, and that's kind of how my background started. I was just kind of born into it. I was one of those guys that just grew up with weapons everywhere. Like yep. to this day, if you open a drawer in my parents' house, um, it's just loaded with ammunition um, <laughs> just because people come in and they pull it out of their, their, their pocket and they put it in the drawer. Oh, I'll use these later. And then they never use them. And there's just, you know, it's just the way it goes. That, and that's hilarious that you, 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 to have that type of exposure at a very young age is somewhat, uh, I would say, kind of rare in this day and age. You know, most people get, uh, at least in my experience, I got all of my experience from shooting mostly in the military. Now, I did shoot with my dad when I was younger and some friends uh, while I was younger as well. But the majority of my experience came from when I was in the military. So um, naturally, in the rural communities, that's pretty more common, but you know, I'm kind of a city boy. I grew up in a larger city and, um, you didn't have much opportunity to be out hunting at a young age. So that's good to hear. I fully understand uh, where you're coming from. And, you know, it's, it can't just be the country anymore. You know, no. I think that, I think that the, the concerns, uh, uh, that are addressed with like urban concealed carry and urban shooters, uh, are definitely things that uh, that are important in the shooting community, and I don't. And I've been I've been happy to see that this is expanding, uh, as far as uh, the uh, as far as the industry concentration is concerned. It's not just uh, catering to us country boys, and it is paying a lot more attention to uh, city folk, if you will. Uh, that that to be honest may need it sooner than me. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So I'm going to switch over to the uh, chat room real quick. We've got uh, Poe po Performance asking a question. Uh, what was your opinion? And this kind of go back to, you know, how you got into the YouTube um, content creation and such. What, what in your opinion is the key to longevity, especially with all the different gun people and the, you know, the, interesting personalities that are out there. How do you feel uh, is the key to longevity in YouTube? Um, so that's actually somewhat of a, of a loaded question, given the political atmosphere at YouTube right now, we'll leave that for later. Uh, but as far as uh, growing your own brand uh, on YouTube or otherwise, it, it, what's really important, I think, is that you distinguish yourself as somebody who's got a unique voice now you're doing something special or different or you've got a special way of doing it uh even if you're doing something iterative um and really um once you get into that and i hate to say it this way uh club <laughs> so to speak uh if you're a youtube gun person uh the people who tend to die the fastest in in that community are people who build their brand by destroying others. Mm. Uh, this is a very yeah. cohesive uh, group. And we may not all hang out. Uh, there are people that I'm not friends with in the gun industry, but I'm not uh, the type of person that sits there and, and you know trash talks somebody publicly. If you built your brand on destroying uh, other brands, then, uh, I mean, within reason, of course, like Springfield Armory, 
forget those people, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, every once in a while, sacrifices must be made. Um, uh, but um, by by trying to build yourself up by trashing this individual over here or what they're trying to do, uh, I liken it to um, the if you look at, um, for instance, the AK uh, division in the industry. Uh, it's something that operates very differently from the rest of the industry where a lot of the industry will say, Hey, this is our stuff. This is what it does. This is why it's special, or this is why you should purchase it over, you know, this brand, that brand or whatever, uh, because we do it this way. Instead, if you look at a lot of the AK companies, they're like, buy our stuff because theirs blows up, right? If you're, if you're conducting yourself in that manner, uh, then, uh, you're going to find yourself with very few friends when you show up. Yep. Um, just so um, the key to longevity is um, I'm not saying don't make waves, but, uh, but make friends and then also uh, do it your own way. So I'll give you again, and I don't want to hog the answer here, but um, uh, for instance, if I'm working on a project, I do not watch anybody else's content on that subject until I'm almost done. So I may say, for instance, um, for instance, I got an AK land uh, on the floor in the other room. Um, I know from pictures on Instagram that I have at least five friends with that gun right now, several of which have published a video. I will not watch their video until I have all, I'm 98% ready to go. I'm ready to pretty much hit the render button. And then I'll go back and be like, all right, um, what did, Mr. Gunsinger say about this? What did Tim from the military arms channel say about this? Just to check myself, make sure I didn't miss anything that was super important. Uh, or maybe I overlooked something that may have, uh, that, that was present in my video that I just did not perceive or something like that. Uh, and what that does, the reason I do it that way is not to make myself look like I'm doing something iterative, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if I have no influence, but my own that I know I own it, um, so build your brand, don't copy and don't tear people down. There you go. Yep. Best words to live by right there. <laughs> and, and that's one of the things that I've been trying to coach with uh, some individuals that, that I know that have been starting up their channel that, that can reach up to someone that's not quite as big, say, as you or, uh, or you know, just kind of get a newer person's perspective on things. And that's kind of what I've said is, in a roundabout way is basically you got to find your click. You got to find the, the, the one thing that makes you different from everybody else and just go with that. So, um, unfortunately with YouTube, things have changed quite a bit on what we're, we are and are not able to post. So, um, I think we've worked through a lot of that, but for the most part, it didn't affect too many people except for the, the reloading crowd. They really got hit pretty bad. So, um, anyway um and that's well, a thing i mean that's that's something that we're just going to have to contend with whenever and you're going to find out um, if you're new to the second amendment community the world hates you okay that's just the way it is that's the way i've grown up with it my entire life is the world is against you too bad yep. Yep. <laughs> and the people who control youtube are in that crowd so yep. you get used to it you can bellyache about it and yes you're going to need to vent and need to talk and transfer information all that sort of stuff but if you let it control you, you're set up for failure. There's one more thing that I wanted to add um, to that original question. And number four, which is go get some real training. So if you're new or even if you've been shooting for a long period of time, go in and getting some um, some high quality, especially defensive training is just good for you in general. And then it will also help uh, your perspective on things as well uh, as you start to play with various things throughout the gun community, uh, because um, you may not have thought of things a certain way until you've been presented information that, um, that can help, uh, bring it into focus, so to speak. Absolutely. So right off the top of your head, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, recommended trainers, recommended trainers. Well, um, currently, um, my two places that I have trained quite a bit at are, um, uh, asymmetric solutions, USA. Uh, they're out of Missouri. Uh, they're a private special operations group. Uh, several people there, just about anybody there and just about any discipline that you would like, uh, they can help you there. Uh, I've spent a vast amount of time at 
Tactical Response. I'm a Tactical Response alumni down in uh, Camden. Yep. And uh, I'm actually going to be going, I go to their alumni thing every year and I'll be a take, I'll be probably taking a class before the week before, just uh, because if I'm going to travel all the way, I'm going to shoot some shit while I'm there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's kind of my continuous education time. You know, uh, yep. for instance, I really want to take like the vehicle tactics classes down there. They have a diverse uh, 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 class schedule there. Uh, I've trained with the people down at the Big Three East in uh, Daytona, Florida. Uh, they offer classes every once in a while. Uh, their main instructor, Q, uh, will not talk about his background. He's one of those. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And then the, um, I think another special one that's not offered very often is I got to train under Lieutenant Colonel Mikey Hartman of the Israeli Defense Force. Uh, he's He basically wrote the uh, Israeli shooting schools doctrine. Uh, and what was cool about it is there's quite a bit different from what we do here in the United States. Some of it's applicable, mm, some of it's not. Uh, and But it gives you a different um, cognitive uh, perspective, so sure. to speak. So, yeah. so did he did he train uh, Israeli carry or is along those lines or? Well, so it's actually kind of weird because, in if you're an Israeli citizen, you can't own a handgun. Mm -hmm. um, like they don't do that there. Uh, and the Israeli citizenry, you go, and if you're male. You, you owe four years. If you're female, I think you owe f two years. Put me on the spot there. I, I need to look that one up. Sure. But every single citizen is required military service. And then you just take your rifle home with you. So, oh, wow. yeah. yeah. So there aren't really handguns except for in special cases there. So everybody just has a rifle. Okay. So right on. Yeah. So uh, I, I got a question from the chat room here that uh, hopefully will not be as abrasive as it looks, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to answer this before I swing it over to you. But uh, you earlier you made a comment about Springfield, and uh, one of the questions is, uh, you know, regarding Springfield, and I'll I'll read it verbatim here. It says, "Why was he recently seen in Springfield booth at NRA checking out the Saint?" Well, just because just because we do not like something doesn't mean that we don't want to go look at it and see what is going on with it. No. So, no, it, no, no. Let me cut you up. Let me break. Okay. You up. All, right, All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me break you off because Jeremy Mallet is one of my friends and he was walking me through to another booth right and i was playing on my phone i wasn't paying attention to where we walked and i had said right before the show that i would not even pass through springfield armory's booth to step on their plush carpet to get to an appointment that i was late for and i was following my friend sending an email and suddenly he stops and he says hey smile and i'm like okay and he snapped a picture and right behind my shoulder is a saint. And he's like, hey, where are you? I'm like, oh, you asshole. Yeah, so, there we go. So um, the answer is, for everybody that's watching, I was tricked. Okay. That's not fair. Too right? that's, that's that's what That's like when my friends, we were driving through and I said I would never step foot in Illinois. And they stopped at a Wendy's and I was asleep. And they didn't tell me where we were. Right? <laughs> so, like, not right. fair. Yeah. So now, now that I put... Uh, one and one together to make three. I know exactly who this individual is, and <laughs> he totally trolled me on this. I didn't, I wasn't paying any yep. attention to what was going on, but uh, good troll, Jeremy. Good yeah, troll. he got you. He got us both. Uh, so <laughs> let's get back on track here sure and thing. get this train, <laughs> get this train back on the rails. So uh, naturally, with keep calm and carry, everybody wants to know what do you carry? What's your EDC? Um, I actually am switching back and forth between two guns right now. Um, so the one that I carry the most is actually this guy right here. And I carry it in um, a NSR C2. So NSR is my preferred. Uh, Dave White is the owner of NSR Tactical. And he uh, I've trained with him multiple times. He When he builds his, his products, he's got a a training mantra in his mind that he uses to produce these things. So I'm not saying that you have to buy NSR to get it right. I'm just saying pick somebody whose training mantra you know so you know why they're producing it and how they're producing. So anyway, shameless plug for uh, my buddy. Uh, but this is a Canik 
TP9 SF Elite. I don't know if that's going to focus that close. Oh, yeah, there, there you, you go. go. There you go. And this is like the Glock 19 size one. Uh, as you can see, it's the two-tone. It does uh, – this is – it's a 15-round capacity magazine. Uh, Beretta pattern magazine with a uh, with a cutout in it, if you're not familiar. Full videos on all the Canic guns that are out there. But uh, I like this one because uh, it's got basically all the stuff that you would find in like a Glock 19. It's just a little bit different. And I, even though it's got these goofy fiber optic sights in it, uh, I tend to shoot it really, really well for some reason. And like I, I capped a groundhog at the, uh, at the range the other day while I was out filming at like 25 yards in the head uh, <laughs> around some rocks and stuff. So I was like, eh, there's a re yeah, there's a reason I carry this one. Uh, but uh, we can come back to that story later. Uh, the second one that I use quite a bit is this Glock 19 here. And this one's actually set up for uh, suppressor testing. Uh, we do a lot of silencer stuff here on the on the channel. We're a silencer shop uh, authority member, and uh, it's got XS Ray suppressor sights, Blacklist Industries uh, threaded barrel, uh, pin kit, their uh, their uh, steel guide rod, as well as uh, one of their uh, reduced weight springs. So this and uh, flare magwell on the bottom and. Uh, this thing is just basically set up to run. Uh, there's some different considerations for uh, putting a silencer on the end of your gun. So this one, between these two, it's one of these things that I'm that I'm rolling with. Um, Glock because they are good enough to run most of the time and shitty enough that if you know you have to shoot somebody with it and this has to be taken into evidence that you can replace it. Right. Yep. And it's yep. pretty much the same thing with this one. Um, I mean, they're pretty much about the same price point. Uh, both of them do. I shoot them really good and they seem to do well uh, as far as their reliability and everything. So those are the two that I'm carrying these days. I might switch an another gun in there periodically, depending on if it's here for testing or something like that. Uh, but pretty much those are my two go to. Right. So uh, with the Canic. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Do are those interchangeable with Glock holsters, or do you have to buy a specific? Well, that's actually a point of contention. So yes, actually, um, but there's there's something that you need to look at, and we have this in a lot of our videos. So this is a Glock outside the waistband NSR holster, right? And it goes in, right? It's 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 there, uh, but it has not been properly relieved for the the large magazine release. So you see that big fat magazine release compared to the stock lock magazine release. So if I take this, this gun, I'm not going to rack it, but if I take this and I put it in this holster, I can still, there you go. Loud noise. Um, I can still eject that magazine. If I basically, if this gets bound against your body or something like that, really hard, it's um, pretty easy to do. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's relatively easy to do. So it can happen now. Um, there are dedicated holsters out there for the Canics. I know that um, NSR makes them. Uh, other people make them as well. But that's the main concern that you're going to have with the Canic to Glock. And it will also fit in, I believe, an MMP holster. But I think it has the same problem. Okay. And uh, referring back to your that first holster that you were looking at the inside the waistband, uh, I saw that you have those those, those button in straps. Um, I can't yeah. can't think of the name of it. Is there a reason that you prefer those opposed to maybe a large clip, or how, how do you how do you approach that? Um, yeah, so these are called pull the dot loops, and they're unidirectional. So I'm not sure again if this is going to work. Um, that's not what we're supposed to be looking at anyway. Um, but if you look there, uh, there is a little nub there. Yep. And what that does is it only goes on one way. So to get this off, you have to pull it that direction. So if I put this like this, which would be the direction adverse to, to draw, it will bind and you can't get it off. Mm -hmm. Um, so the idea being, uh, with a clip holster, if it's, jostling around uh, underneath your clothing uh for whatever reason up down kneeling sitting running whatever uh, i can get jostled around and if you go to draw sometimes that holster can come out the other thing that's really nice about these that i find is they have the ability to to flex ever so slightly 
and that allows it to flex around depending on uh, your positioning, whether you're kneeling behind something, sitting, driving, running, whatever. Uh, it gives you a great deal of flexibility. This is actually not the appendix rig that's, uh, that NSR uses. This is their four o'clock carry, but I use it for appendix uh, because I am a, uh, I carry a weak side appendix, which is different. And the reason I carry that way is because it doesn't point at my femoral artery when I'm you know, sitting down or anything like that, or when I'm standing, uh, it would technically miss everything that is uh, vital. Well, <laughs> vital, not necessarily important, but vital. <laughs> so uh, that's why I do it this way. And I just, you know, I they they make fun of me at NSR all the time. You're like, they're like, you know, dude, we make a holster that's designed for that. You could like actually use the one. And no, I'm good. Don't need it. <laughs> so, uh, but that is why I use these. I'm not saying that clips are wrong, but uh, basically, unless it's an ulti clip, it's pretty much wrong. Right. So. On. Right on. Uh, switch it over to the chat room again re here, real quick. Uh, shooting with Uncle Dan asks. VSO, do you still use the see all site? Um, I actually do use it from time to time, but not on a pistol. Uh, I and the reason why, and I this is the same reason I don't use a um, a red dot on pistols a whole lot. And the reason why is if you look at sights as a as a visual aid. Um, they basically tell you the line that the bullet is going to fly. If you have a single point, yes, it can be faster, but you will not gain the ability to basically visualize the arc of the bullet. So you can have it like this, and you know that it's going to travel in a straight line going out, but then when gravity starts taking effect, well, where does it go from there? If you have one point of reference, you don't really have a bead on where that goes, and... Uh, it's like the concept of throwing the baseball. You know, mm -hmm. you don't use sights to throw a baseball at something and you just whip it at it and it goes. Same thing with catching it. You don't do any of that sort of stuff. Your brain auto -cal calculates. If you eliminate the visual aid, then your brain can no longer calculate where that bullet is going to fly on its arc. So that's why I don't use it on a pistol. Uh, on a rifle, uh, we're talking about more extended range type stuff where that may not be as applicable. And uh, yes, you do have to do that. But at that point in time, if you're shooting at that kind of distance, you probably have a magnified optic on there of some kind. Uh, you pr or if you are using it in that uh, kind of configuration, uh, then you're probably uh, pretty well trained up on the, uh, the trajectory of like your 5.56 round or something like that, uh, which basically gives you to zero to 400 with a single point of aim. So... Uh, that's the that's just my quick spiel on why or why not, uh, and that's why you don't see a lot of uh, optics on my pistols either. Yep, that's that's great information. Uh, it's something that's probably been kicking around in my head, just not able to articulate it that way. So that's that's actually really really good. So uh, let's lighten up things a little bit, and we've kind of bounced this around a little <laughs> in the email here. But uh, what's uh, what's your most embarrassing moment while carrying? Well, I'm going to clean this one up significantly because um, <laughs> my fiance is in the other room. Uh, but, you know, at one point in time, I'm, I'm divorced. And uh, when I was kind of in that period of my life where I was basically, you know, mid-20s, single, you know, all that sort of stuff where, you know, you don't just stop caring because you're dating, right? And there may have been some, some things that have were going on that, you know, led to the discovery of the fact that this was in the appendix carry configuration, right? Uh, did not end well. Just leave it at that, <laughs> right? Uh, whatever do you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know what? We have to keep this clean for YouTube or it won't be yeah. able to go up there anyway, so, you know. Okay, okay, fair. <laughs> you've, got, you've got me blushing now, so I... Uh, yeah, start to sweat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. It's quite all right. So just take a little bit of a break. We'll head over to uh, the chat room real quick and say hey to everybody. Uh, Jeremy, again, thank you for trolling me. I really do appreciate that uh, and your beautiful bald head. So <laughs> shooting with Dave, uh, shooting with Uncle Dan, rather. Uh, thanks for swinging by, Andrew. 
Drew, again, he uh, he appreciates your perspective on the red dot. He's been considering putting a red dot on his M&P. I have my Glock 19 in the shop right now getting cut for an RMR. Is that something that I wanted to get into to kind of figure that out too? Uh, and just kind of, it helps me put some perspective into uh, why I shouldn't rely solely on uh, the sites. So um, great, great point. So let's uh, change gears here real quick and... One of the things that I've found, uh, especially with you, is that you are an active voice in the QA, uh, the 2A community, rather. So what would you say is the biggest challenge right now with, with our community? Um, in, in general, I think the biggest challenge or problem that we have in the gun community, if you want to use that as a term, is that we infight way too much. So we spend a vast quantity of energy. If you just look at comment sections, if you look at uh, Facebook posts, all that sort of stuff, company uh, pages, at, within reason again, Springfield Armory, um, um, we spend a vast quantity of energy in fighting. And if we took just a fraction of that time that we spent uh, BSing on Facebook and directed it towards contacting our officials, um, organizing activist campaigns for things like the Hearing Protection Act, uh, any number of things that would be pro 2A advancement. If we spent a fraction of the energy that we waste on the infighting on that sort of thing, then uh, we would have very few of the problems that we have here today. Uh, and that is something I sincerely believe. You can see it everywhere. I guarantee you I'm gonna be able to get off this and go check some comments on our, my most recent video and see some crap written there. Um, there's just, there's just, um, I don't know. I don't know what drives that. Um, <laughs> I don't have time for a lot of that sort of stuff, so I don't understand it, but there are some people that are just, I guess, bored and they're, they're too lazy to get out and actually do something. Uh, but in reality, they're just fine sitting there watching Netflix and talking crap on people who are actually on their team. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, Drew just chimed in and uh, <laughs> he said, All right, uh, nine millimeter versus, versus 45 will never end. Uh, both are pretty. Uh, let's use that energy to fight Bloomberg and company. You know? <laughs> exactly right. So, I mean, now, I mean, I will, I, I, there's no such, there's no reason we can't have like intelligent discourse. Uh, but if you look at, for instance, I'm a nine millimeter guy and I don't have a problem with 45. Uh, but if you just look at the real world evidence, as far as shooting people is concerned, it really doesn't make a matter, matter d doesn't make a difference with uh, modern hollow point technology and all those sort of things. If you ask a surgeon, uh, they had a survey come out from various surgeons around the country, and they basically said they can't tell the difference between somebody shot with a 940 45. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, where I will tell you that it matters if you're shooting pigs or something like that, or dangerous game. Caliber does matter. Um, 45 is way more effective on a charging wild boar than a nine millimeter, no matter what hollow point you put in it. That's different than the majority of the conversation that we have, which is basically shooting people. And the, the, def the definitive piece of data that the FBI uses, and uh, it was instrumental in their, um, their choice to go with nine millimeter over the other calibers was penetration depth and standard FBI gel. And whatever penetrated the most, that was the, 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 what they were looking for. Cool. Yep. That's a great point. Uh, you know, and going back to your comment about, uh, comments on videos or whatever the case may be, you know, even though I've, you know, I'm still somewhat of a newer, smaller channel. I still get a lot of comments that are just so unbelievably, um, you know, ridiculous. Uh, this, just this newest one that I got here a day or two or so uh, said that I was said that I was uh, illogical and irrational because I carry appendix and I don't mind shooting my junk off or shooting myself in the femoral artery, uh, and just went on and on and on and. Um, you know, I, typically I would bounce back with some 
quip, but I uh, decided, you know, just to reply back and said, you know, why don't you tell me how you really feel? You know, yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of that. And then there's a lot of people that are very passionate about it. Look, I use what works for me and I preach what I do on my channel. Um, it's my space. I say it my way. Um, I have lots of personalities that come on my channel. You know, I have multiple people that help me out and uh, I don't cut them off when they want to go off on their tangent on why they shoot or why they um, shoot a 45 or why they shoot a 40 or why they carry four o'clock or, you know, whatever. Um, and all I do is reference specific training examples. Uh, and that's all I, that's all I can do. Uh, right. So. Right. <laughs> Uh, right on. So where, where, what are your thoughts on the new YouTube policies and how do you think, uh, things were, I mean, cause there for a second, everything was kind of doom and gloom, uh, in the month, in the month of March when they announced everything. And then there was that incident that happened at, uh, one of their, uh, headquarters buildings uh, with the shooting. Do you think that that had any type of impact of how much they were going to come down on gun channels or um, what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't think that their, their incident that they had there, uh, uh, which by the way, we, we vehemently uh, uh, condemned by the way. Absolutely. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, what I would say is uh, I, I don't think that the people that work at Google and YouTube um, could even connect the two, right? I don't think that they think on that kind of level. Uh, I And I may piss some people off, but I think that that line of thinking is a mental disease, like that that way that they mm -hmm. like uh, uh, a aggregate information. Uh, I think that uh, there's a mental defect going on up there. And I don't think that they would be able to say, oh, well, we started screwing with people some of our, if you really categorize this, some of our own people and one of them went nuts and shot the place up. Maybe we should not do that. Um, I don't think that they can put that together. Right. And I'm not saying again, we condemned the, the attack. It was not cool. Uh, you don't do that. That's not the way that you do that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, as far as like our feelings on the whole YouTube thing, I think it's only a, a matter of time before they continue to ratchet it up. Uh, we know and we have known for a long period of time that they don't like us. Okay. They, and if they had the capacity to turn us all off tomorrow, they would. Uh, but right now the political climate is um, kind of adverse to them doing that. It would take a big hit if they did that sort of thing. So what they do is the same thing they always do, uh, which is a progressive approach. You know, they take a little nibble at a time, and once they once everybody digests that and they kind of like, OK, well, this is a new norm. It's not that big of a deal. Then take another one, another one, another one, another one until they can basically marginalize uh, the population that they are trying to and basically boot it. So we know that this is going on this. We know that this is the way they operate. The, they do it in everything. <laughs> so it's not a new playbook by any stretch of the imagination. They just made it at this point in time harder for a lot of people to conduct business. Now, as far as we are concerned, uh, I built my business around my channel. My business is not my channel. Uh, and the positive of that is as long as, so if they booted us uh, for whatever reason, uh, we would still survive. And now it would impact us to a significant degree, but it's, it's, we do have other avenues. So it wouldn't kill us immediately uh, because we, for instance, are a Full30 content creator. Uh, we've been there for a couple of years. Uh, if you're not subscribed to us at Full30, please, of course, go over there and find us. Um, everything goes up over there. Uh, and we kind of use that as, um, and I think it's becoming the, the, the quote unquote lifeboat to quote one of the people over there at full 30 for a lot of the second amendment community. Uh, but we are going to continue to stay on YouTube and fight on YouTube because I think it's exceptionally important uh, as a uh, generational recruiting tool uh, for the second amendment uh, and uh, passing that information and that uh, those ideals onto the next generation so that they, they can grow up to be responsible uh, 
citizens and you know just well educated all around. Um, so uh, that's why we stay there. Yep, we and, have to. And and it's a great point. One of the things that I did see on Instagram, I think I think it was today, is you know uh, Mr. Guns and Gear and AK Operators Union. Those two channels have been really getting uh, beat up a lot here recently. Uh, and one of the things that uh, Mike did was he reported one of the individuals that said that they're going to, to try to strike him uh, as harassing. So he's using their own tactics against him. And I thought that was actually pretty pretty clever of him uh to try to do that so uh good on him and uh, hopefully it works I, I really hope that uh um robsky can figure out what's going on with uh his his situation why he keeps on getting strikes he'll he'll appeal it they'll take it down and then the very next day he gets another strike um and it was just completely <sighs> yeah. yeah i've been monitoring that on instagram um i've been to events with rob before he's a good dude um, but like, I don't interact with him on the level of like having his cell phone number or anything like that. Um, uh, he's a nice dude. He does good work. Um, he's taught us a lot of things, um, uh, uh, over the years. So, uh, it's definitely vital that he remains because he is an excellent resource. Uh, as much as people, you know, may say this or that about what he does or, you know, whatever he provides good quality content from a, from an entertainment perspective and good solid data on things. And he's built an, an impressive community over there. So, um, if you are, um, not following the AK operators union, uh, they're also a full 30 content creator. Make sure you go over there and subscribe to them on that uh, platform as well, as well as go over to their channel. Uh, when you get done with this today, uh, when the show ends and just write them a letter, uh, a note of encouragement on one of their videos. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's, yep. Uh, so that uh, pretty much covers the questions I had for the two way community and kind of U two stuff that's going on right now. So wanted to take a second to kind of break away from you know EDC and two A and stuff like that. And I had a question uh, from a listener here. Let me back up and see if I can find it. Uh, it's from Matt. He says uh, he says hey. Curtis, what's going on? Newbie to the gym question. What's the advantage of setting up a bench press in a squat rack or pin benching? Okay. So um, for those of the uh, listeners that don't follow, you know, all my social media or whatever, uh, it, I'm one of my side hobbies. Besides, I spend a lot of time doing the gun thing, but just about every day I go to the gym and I'm kind of more of like the power lifter type person that that doesn't really care about normal powerlifting things, right? Like I want to be as strong as I can, stay as strong as I can, as long as I can. I will never compete in anything uh, just because I don't care. Um, it's for my own personal uh, gratification and, and advancement. Um, and what I would say is, so I used to not believe in what Matt is calling pin benching. I thought it was a stupid exercise um, because it was inefficient. And, um, and I still actually believe that. Because uh, what Matt is referring to is um, you pull the weight off the bench and we'll just use this pen here. You pull it off the bench and you lower it down and then you rest it on the safety pins and then you re-engage after a period of time uh, and perform the lift that way. Uh, what I would say is that you should not lower it to the pins. You should hold it on your chest. So if it's touching the pins, the pins are placed improperly. And the purpose of that is to control the descent of the weight such that you get the full range of motion under tension. And then you hold the weight at the bottom for a good, strong stretch. And then you reverse the movement to the explosive side of the, of the house, which is the, what most people concentrate on bench press. So a normal bench press where somebody pulls the, the weight off and basically, you know, goes like this is called poverty bench and uh, i used to think that poverty bench was the way to do it because it was dynamic motion and all that sort of stuff and and you could get more reps and things like that um, what i found is that a um, that a bench press that allows you to that uh, is done under very controlled action with exceptionally good form that brings it down to the chest and I, this is not correct form by the way i'm just not tall enough um, bring it down, hold it for a full second, and then press the weight um, is exceptionally beneficial. Uh, I started doing that about 
six months ago because I had a major plateau problem uh, doing poverty bench. And I've completely smashed that plateau, even though uh, my diet doesn't really lend itself to making major gains in the gym. So um, the benefits of, of what some would call pin bench with that modification that I just uh, put out there uh, cannot be understated. Right on. Right on. And that's, that's, that's actually pretty good. I, I've moved away from um, heavy lifting um, between some of the things that I endured while I was in the military uh, through, you know, jump school and aerosol school and some of the other things that I was involved in. <clears throat> uh, my joints are uh, a little bit more achy than, <laughs> than I would like them to be. So I've kind of tr I've transitioned to doing a lot of hit style workouts, uh, high intensity interval training workouts. And I've really enjoyed those. The gym that I attend right now is more kickboxing, MMA and boxing focused while you're doing a hit style workout. So I've really enjoyed that, but I, I sure do still and enjoy lifting heavy weights. I just I just never do it anymore. So, but, uh, definitely, definitely good on you being in the gym. And I encourage everybody, uh, if you can do be active, I mean, do what you can, uh, even if it's getting out and walking a couple miles each and every single day, do what you can to stay active. And that's going to keep you young through, if, through the years. If for no other reason than, um, you know, you can say all these ethereal things about, oh, will it extend your life expense speculative and it give you a better quality of life. Uh, everybody here that's watching this is probably a gun person. So I would say that if for no other reason than being active in your lifestyle, even if it's just spending a few hours a day or an hour a day at the gymnasium, uh, lifting weights or whatever, um, will drastically increase your shooting ability. You yep. have so much more control over what you're doing if you are a strong person. Uh, and your endurance will also increase um, because what you don't realize is when you shoot that firearm, every single time it recoils, you have to counteract that recoil to bring it back down. And that takes energy. That is, if you just take that, that motion in a vacuum is not a very um, powerful motion. It doesn't take a whole lot of energy to do that, but it's still a little bit of energy each time, just like running. It's not by itself, the individual motions of running are not a very strenuous activity, but when you stretch them all together, I don't know about you, I don't run very far, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, when you string the whole action together in a, in, per unit time, it becomes a strenuous activity because you have a, a sub-maximal movement that is occurring repetitively. If you get strong enough to the point where that action of counteracting that recoil becomes that much more sub-maximal, your endurance increases. Yep, Plenty very much so. Yep. Go deadlift. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of one of the uh, directions that I'm taking my channel in. And uh, Wednesday morning, we'll uh, start a new series on my channel where I'm actually going to start trying to do some sort of work out or at least uh, try to apply stress to my body while I'm shooting, obviously in a controlled, safe environment. But um, I'm going to try to stress my body out physically to somewhat uh, mimic what my body would do under adrenaline or during fatigue to help, you know, help me learn where my limitations are, how to fight through that stress. And hopefully heaven forbid anyone would ever be in a fight, but, uh, be able to come out the victor at the other side. So, so, um, in your, uh, day to day, do you take like a pre-workout or anything like that when you go to the, to the gym or anything like that? Or do you take any supplements or anything like that? Not, not, not a pre-workout. Uh, I do a post-workout, uh, drink. Uh, it tastes, it's supposed to taste like peaches, but I can't remember what it called. Mm -hmm. But it <laughs> peach is never peach is never a good good option. The reason I ask that question is, go get yourself a powerful pre workout. We did a video on this. Get like Mister Hyde or something like that, like three hundred fifty milligrams of caffeine, right? And take like a scoop and a half, right? And then just start doing push ups, okay? And then every you know you know do bang out a set of like twenty or fifty or something like that, and then start shooting. Right. And as soon as you finish your sequence, reload your magazines, more push ups. Right. And then I guarantee you, by the time you get your arms fatigued to the point and your chest fatigued and all that sort of stuff, your heart rate is going to be at max 
and your heart and your hands are going to be shaken, mm -hmm. right? Trust me, because I know, because we did it. <laughs> okay. In fact, uh, my buddy that did it with me, I didn't realize that he had like one kidney. He never told me that he had like one kidney. And I gave him my <laughs> dose and I, I weigh 225 and he weighs like 170, 175, 180, something like that. And I gave him mine, right? And he's like, dude, I think I'm going to puke. <laughs> like, I think like, I need to drive home like now or like, like I may go horizontal. Right. <laughs> I'm like, dude, why didn't you tell me? Right. Yeah. And I didn't put yeah. two and two together cause he doesn't really drink and I don't really drink. So we never, the, it just never came up. Mm -hmm. Right. But I should have thought of it because if he drinks a cup of coffee, I took him to shot show once and I got him a 20 ounce coffee and I couldn't control him. <laughs> right? like, he was, like I'd lose him. Cause I'd get pulled to talk to somebody. And then like five minutes later, I'm like, Hey dude, where are you on the phone? And he's like, Oh, I'm at the FN booth. And I was like, dude, that's like a mile away. How the hell did you get over there? Right. <laughs> Speed walk. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you must've just like, yeah. uh, so right on. Yeah. It, it can't, I mean, don't do that every day. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you're starting a new series, there's an idea for you. <laughs> yep. There you go. I, I got it written down. So we'll definitely Stimulants. look at that. Yeah. <laughs> you could do a whole series on various stimulants. I'm there sure you that YouTube would love that. I'm sure. Yeah. We'll have to make sure that we stay with the legal ones, obviously. Well, so. I don't know. The way that they YouTube does their thing, man, they may actually award you extra points for doing like illicit stuff. Oh, has. no, no, no. If you follow Philip DeFranco, that's kind of one of my non-gun channels that I watch on a regular basis because he, he's he's pretty center for the most part, but uh, he uh, he just came out with uh, a new ad apocalypse on all of these different um, marijuana channels uh, that, you know, talk about municipal uh, or medical marijuana uh, and, and those those types of things, but uh, they're getting like demonetized left or right. They've like dropped 120,000 videos or something like that. So be careful with that too. So, yeah, I'm it's site wide. I mean, it's all, it's all site wide and yep. it's, and really it's just an excuse. Yeah, I mean, Alphabet, really is. Alphabet is not hurting for money. They bought, they bought YouTube because they wanted control of the second most popular search engine in the world. Yep. Yep. So they don't care if it runs in the red. They don't nope. care. Yep. It's all control. Yep. yep, it is. So uh switching over, Izzy wants to know hard or soft tacos. Oh, dude. Izzy's trolling me. He must have saw the uh the thing from the other day. Um uh but Izzy is a good dude. Um yeah. I actually got to sit next to him at Shot Show in the Media Lounge, talk to talk to him for a little bit. Hey, Izzy, good to see you again. Um, soft tacos all the way because I can't eat go. a hard taco. No, nope. like it just yeah. it just blows up. It's like somebody exactly. You bite one bite and then it just falls all the way through because it cracks down the center. So yeah. So and I'm a very you can ask my fiance. I'm an exceptionally messy eater too. So like I'm the dude that has to have like another taco shell under the taco I'm eating so that I can just scoop it all into a thing, add a few things, I like get another taco. So, so I will say back in the day when I did eat Taco Bell, I refused to eat there anymore. But the 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 hard taco that was in the soft taco, I can't remember what they called that. That was my favorite. That is called a cheesy gordita crunch. There we go. Because my fiance eats them all the time. <laughs> um, so I'll get done with the gym or whatever and go over and um, and she'll want whatever. And I'll get it. Um, I don't really eat the Taco Bell anymore, um, but she likes the stuff. I don't care what she eats. Um, she can. She's a. If you haven't seen her, she's a very attractive woman. Are you she, still talking to me no, online? no, I'm not. I heard you say something about when you eating cheesy or something. Do you or do you not eat cheese? I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. She is a very. She is a very attractive woman. She does not need to care about cheesy Dorito crunches. <laughs> at all right she works out okay bye bye now bye. Right. <laughs> sorry everybody no no by all means uh, i've i've had uh i've had my wife drive by at the same time are you talking about us you know <laughs> so all righty so um i digress i'm going to turn it over to you do you have any questions of me or anybody uh, out in the chat room that you'd like to ask Sure thing, man. Um, so first off, what are you working on these days? So what, what's new in, in your thing? Like you talked about the, you know, the, the new series or whatever. 
that you're working with on the on the on the fitness related stuff related to shooting and stuff like that but you know what other projects you working on like you know what do you what do you got in the pipeline so to speak yeah so i've got I'm way far behind. <laughs> so I've started getting into precision precision shooting. So I've got to do uh, a few more videos of stretching the legs out on my Ruger precision rifle that I just picked up here uh, about a month and a half ago. So six five. Uh, yep, yeah, six five Creedmoor. Yep, that's the sweetness right now. Everybody loves it. Um, so. Uh, Ruger Precision Rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor, 24 inch barrel, and then BNT Industries sent me out a Atlas bipod and monopod that I need to do a review on, and then Athlon has an optic that I need to do a full review on as well. So that's that's one thing. Uh, I am updating my AR pistol with some SB Tactical stuff, some Geisley stuff, some Metacore Arm stuff. So I got several videos to do there um so real quick yeah two questions on that um is it the sba3 the new pistol stabilizing brace that that they came out with because that thing is 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 awesome all right right i just i did a video on it and we're going to probably do another video here very soon because we're giving one away. They're I was going to say you're giving one away. Unfortunately, I'm not as cool as you right at the second. So it is the SBL. That's what okay. I was able to get my hands on. No, so that, That's a good brace, too. It's a good yeah. brace, too. But the SBA3 yeah. is like the shit. Okay? Yes. <laughs> like, in fact, I just did a video on did, it, did the, did the uh, brace kill the SBR. Uh, and it wasn't featured in that one because we had another one. But... Um, I referenced that the SBA three pretty much, you know, for, for right now kills it. Yeah. Uh, the other question I had for you is you said, Geisley, what is your favorite Geisley trigger? Oh my goodness. You're going to put me on the spot here. Yes, I am. I'm really bad about uh, nomenclatures and stuff, but I believe it's the SSAE is the one that I dropped into my um, last uh, build that I did. Uh, I called it the Reaper, but, um, it uh, was a trigger that was given to me by uh, Geisley when I went out to IV 8088's range day. Um, and I, it's, oh my goodness, that thing is so light and crisp. I, I just, so far, I love it to death. Um, I have a SSA uh, trigger, which is in my Aero Precision uh, M41. And it, it's really good too, but that SSAE that enhance that you can tell it's enhanced just a little bit. So, yep. So, um, a real quick anecdotal story. Um, I have, and you can find it still on the internet because I leave all my videos up, even if I change an opinion, because I, I have, I use it as a chronology, right? You can see the progression of the information and the knowledge and the perspective, right? So I can leave all my old stuff up there unless it's like egregious, right? <laughs> um, but, um, especially the early stuff. And I, you can find it where I have said that I will never shoot an after factory trigger, that mil spec <laughs> is the trigger that you need to shoot because of, because of this reason or that reason or whatever. I changed that perspective when I shot my first Geisley trigger. And I have, I, I've shot them all. Like I've shot all their triggers and I choose to use their Tricon. They go, it goes in every single one of my guns, hmm. uh, whether it's a long range gun, whether it's a, uh, short range gun. It's just same trigger and everything. Uh, and to tell you the truth, the day they stop making that trigger, I will, my soul will die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and, and that was kind of interesting when it came to Geisley, cause I knew that everybody loved Geisley and I would look at him and I'm like, what's the hype, man? It looks just like a mil spec trigger. There's nothing, you know, I was expecting like one of the single stage drop in with the anti rotation, you know, pins and everything. And, and looking at a Geisley, it's just kind of, mm, yeah. But then the moment that you pull that trigger on, <laughs> my goodness, it's just, it's butter. Yeah, it is. And one of the things, one of the most valuable things that I can say about um, the trigger, and this works with the SSA uh, and the SSAE, you'll see this. Um, and uh, it, but it's present in the Tricon too, is there's a little, ever so slightly, a little bit of take up at the front. And what that allows you to do is if you have a tendency to, 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 to punch the trigger, you get a second chance hmm. because you can feel yourself go to punch it 
and it's just the take up. Mm, and yep. then you're up against a glass rod. So you're like, oh, well, I'm at the back now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So that's especially um, when I was kind of developing my own kind of methodology for my trigger press and things like that on uh, that trigger. Man, I tell you what, uh, it's a game changer. It really is. You, it will it will help you shoot better. I'm not saying it will make you shoot better, but if you pay attention to the way the, the thing is built, it will help you. And that's a very good point because uh, I have a uh, Palmetto State Armory enhanced um, mil spec trigger. It, it, it's enhanced because they say it's polished. It was cheap. I needed something on my pistol build and I shot that this weekend. And in comparison to what I had previously shot with the SSAE, it felt like I was pulling 10 pounds worth of trigger pull on that PSA. Now it's a great trigger. Uh, it works well. It's, you know, it's two stage, no problem. And it's very much like a mil spec trigger, but just the difference is completely noticeable. So yeah, I, I got to switch up. What'd you say? I, I was just saying, I got to switch up. I got to switch everything oh, yeah. to Geisley. <laughs> um, so what I would say, and a lot of people will say, well, dude, I, you know, you know, there's a differing, like I have lots of opinions out there about, you know, uh, well, you should buy quality, buy once, cry once, and then you should buy, you know, uh, you know, bargain for this reason or whatever. Uh, there's nothing wrong with owning some bargain components. You just have to realize what they are. Yeah, and exactly. By and having them laying around is not a problem, especially for somebody like me who just like every week it seems like I'm building a new upper or lower or whatever uh, for whatever specific purpose I'm doing it, uh, and to have those extra components laying around helps you in a pinch, right? Especially if you break something. So for instance, if you, if that trigger goes down, right, even if you've swapped it out, right, five years from now, and you've still got that Palmetto State Armory uh, enhanced trigger sitting in the top of your, of uh, your toolkit or whatever, or your, or your workbench, right? If that, if that go, if that game day trigger breaks down, uh, you still have something you say, Hey, this gun can run again in five minutes. You just punch the pins, put it in and ready to roll. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's, there's value in having those extra components laying around, but it's just not, not my choice to run them on a continuous, continuous basis because uh, again, components, all of them, no matter how well made they are, who makes them, they are going to break eventually. Uh, and some of those bargain level things are just going to wear out faster. That's yep. just the, the economy of scale. It's yep. just the way it works. Yep. So um, one of the other projects that I'm working on as well is uh, you mentioned Silencer Shop earlier. I've been able to get hooked up with them as well. And uh, we'll be doing a number of um, suppressor videos because to be frankly honest with you, I know very little about suppressors. And I want to learn more. I want to get my uh, get my hands on as many as I can to understand, you know, what is what does this suppressor do for uh, a pistol build in comparison to, you know, a full length rifle or, you know, uh, maybe even the longer, you know, 30 cal cans for a precision rifle or whatever the case may be. So that's something else I'm working on as well. Well, you have my cell phone number. Call me anytime, text me anytime. I've been, um, I've been a silencer shop pro staff, uh, authority member, uh, for I think three years now. Um, we're getting ready to expand also to be able to take on more of the NFA stuff. Uh, I did a tally the other day and I've shot 74 designs. Oh, wow. Total. So, uh, and that's, and I'm nowhere close to all of them. Right. 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 They're, they're like Pokemon. Once you start, right? you gotta collect them all, right? <laughs> um, so um, um, this is a great step uh, for your channel and uh, direction uh, because the biggest problem with silencers today is that, um, the information, it does not flow as readily as uh, a lot of the other things that are out there. So you can basically find all the information that you could ever possibly want on an AR-15. Every inf piece of information that you could ever possibly want on a Glock, just search it on Google. You can find it. Um, not that I'm plugging Google or anything, <laughs> given our conversation earlier, but um, th it's open source. It's, it's readily available. The problem with um, silencers is that so such a small, such a smaller, um, um, 
niche community has as access to them at such a um, broad spectrum that the information is only passed from person to person. Oh, hey, I bought this can and it sounds great. It sounds great compared to what? Well, the gun unsuppressed. Well, duh, right? <laughs> or, you know, so they, they may not have the opportunity, for instance, to do side by side comparisons for these items. Uh, and that's where uh, we come in to be able to do that for them, to be able to show them like this is better than this for this reason. And um, there's some concerns there that create various problems between various people and people are very brand specific, uh, very brand myopic when it comes to a lot of the, um, a lot of the silencer designs that are out there. I have, I know that I have my picks, um, but I'm still open to try out new designs. And we get word from our people that new designs are coming all the time. And um, the technology, the good news is the technology has reached a point of relative singularity where um, it, it, most companies can make a decent can, um, depending on, uh, you know, we're not gonna throw any names out there, but most companies can make a decent can. Only a few companies can make an excellent can. And the yep. difference, they're very slight, but when you shoot one that is excellent and you've been used to shooting shit cans or okay cans, so to speak, you can really tell the difference. And I'm, I promise you, it will excite you when it happens. Yep. Um, so, um, and, and that's one of the, the big things is, uh, you know, I noticed that you did a, a review on the Banshee. Of course, you did the nine millimeter version. I did. And we're still working on the 45 and okay. the nine millimeter, uh, nine millimeter, 45, 300 blackout and uh, 22. So yep. we, we did them all. We have, we just haven't released the videos yet. Yeah. Um, so um, I've got the. 300 blackout sitting right over here. And uh, th that was my first experience with being able to shoot not only a suppressed uh, pistol length or, or SBR length uh, rifle, but also to be able to utilize subsonic munitions and just hear the difference between standard velocity and subsonic uh, was, was night and day. And it really impressed me uh, and made things a lot more, a lot more fun. So that that's, that's, Kind of my angle is, hey, I'm new to this. This is what my experiences are. That's kind of the angle I'm taking with suppressors. So you kind of cheated a little bit because you jumped ahead to some of the premium stuff, right? Mm. <laughs> In yeah. Banshee. Okay, so you 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 didn't have any garage builds or any you know shit guns uh, show up uh, before you shot a really awesome 300 blackout gun. Yep. No, um, no, no so, oil filters. So <laughs> no, no, none of those. Um, as far as the can is concerned. Um, I would call it a pretty good can. It's not a premium can, but it, it cleans up. It does all right. Uh, and you'll see the difference. Like if you get into, you know, as you progress in your, in your career, so to speak, uh, shooting different cans, you'll be able to see subtle nuances from this, from this point forward. The, the, the important thing is you recognize that you have a starting point and then from there you can branch out. But as far as the, the CMMG cans are concerned, they're, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, now, you know, is it a top of the line can? No, but I would suggest that it's a can that people can purchase or at least should consider. Yep. Okay. Just one second here. Sure. Hi, everybody. He's on mute right now. Uh, he has to um, confer with whoever's talking to him. Sound female. So that means that he's probably in trouble because he's been running too long. So this will probably get edited out later, but. Um, are you back now? I'm back now. I'm sorry. Uh, my wife is preparing for the field and she's trying to find some of her equipment. Uh, so. <laughs> so you so, stole some of her equipment. Borrowed. No, no. This one time I did not. So, but <laughs> thanks for filling in. I sure appreciate that. No uh, but yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and wrap things up. We're pushing sure. uh, an hour and 15 minutes and I sure do appreciate you swinging by and uh, taking uh, yeah, an hour and 15 minutes, 16, 17 minutes out of your evening to just kind of shoot the shit with us and, and, uh, and yeah, just learn more about who you are and what VSO Gun Channel is all about. That means a lot to me. And I'll, I'll turn it over to you and let you have the last word here. Well, guys, I appreciate you, you having me on and, 
and paying attention to my shenanigans for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I, as I said at the beginning, uh, I always uh, enjoy coming on these live shows, um, especially uh, when I get here and the and the host actually knows what they're doing. All right, they're personable and they can actually uh, put some thoughts together and they're organized, uh, which this show is. So I appreciate you uh, having me on. And as I said, it's always good to come on these things because it's just an opportunity to 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 be myself and and you know show people that I'm not just some robot on the internet. Uh, so, uh, but which it, it can feel um, as a content creator, it can. And I'm sure that you know this as well. It can feel isolating sometimes uh, because you're constantly either at the range by yourself or in your office by yourself or doing something pretty much by yourself because nobody can help you. Uh, so um, it's good to get on field questions from the audience and things like that. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, go ahead and ask away. Yep. And, and naturally I'll share all of your, um, you know, different links that you have to your different social media sites, uh, obviously your YouTube page, uh, and anything else that you would like for me to, to share, I can put that in the description, uh, a little bit later as this uploads onto YouTube as well. So cool. YouTube, Facebook, full 30, uh, Instagram, Twitter, somehow, I don't know how it works. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, and, uh, Patreon. There you uh, go. Also on Vimeo now. So a lot of our patrons uh, get vid early links on, on, Patre on Patreon through Vimeo. Uh, I'm already there. I might as well use this stuff. Um, kind of like as a back-end archive type thing. So Sure. Yeah. All right on. There, so there's the list. Uh, again, I'll, I'll compile all of that stuff, put it down into the description below here uh, a little bit later. So we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. I sure do appreciate everybody swinging by, especially Jeremy for trolling us the entire time. I, that was a lot of fun. Thank you, sir. Izzy, thank you so much for swinging on. Uh, swinging on by. It was great to see you in the chat room as well. BR549, you are always a staple. I appreciate Alaskan Ballistics. Drew, all of you guys, I really appreciate you swinging by. This has been a real treat for me. And that that's it. You guys know where to find me. Naturally, you're here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Uh, swing by my website. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're interested in supporting me through Patreon, link to that is down in the description below. And that covers it for this time. Appreciate it. Again, thank you so much. Keep calm and carry. See you guys.